So in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys a little story. This happened to me almost 10 years ago, but you know, just because I like to bring up the past and relive all those wonderful memories, I'm going to be telling this story once again. I'm going to be reliving a wonderful memory of when I was in court trying to sue somebody. <laughs> I am going to be withholding names and not giving specific details because I don't want to put that person on blast even though they kind of like low-key deserve it, but it's fine, it's not a big deal. Anyways, other than that, <laughs> let's get to the story. It's fine. I'm over it, it's been 10 years. It's not like I think about it every night before I go to sleep. But it started back in 2009, I was in Lebanon for the summer. In the beginning of my stay there, keep in mind she's like a really close family friend, like her mom and my mom are, have known each other for a while. So she sends me this email basically saying, oh, I'm getting married this year and you know, I need a photographer and I would love, like I know you do the art stuff. I basically told her, hey, you know, I'm not really a photographer because keep in mind, at, at, in 2009, I had not started doing photography professionally. I started photography professionally in 2011. So I mean, 2009, I was over there just trying to breathe in the air. I was just living my life. So back in 2009, I was entering college for my first year in my bachelor's of fine arts for graphic design. I had nothing to do with photography. I didn't even own a camera, how about that? And I spoke to her over the phone. She was really adamant about me doing it because I'm artistic. Like she kept saying, oh, you're artistic. I know you'll do a good job and it's okay. I don't, I don't remember the exact conversation, but that basically she wanted me to shoot her wedding. So I told her, I'm just an art student. I don't know much more than that. Like I can color if it's labeled like blue here, red here. I don't know what she was expecting. I mean, it's gonna be a surprise for the both of us. Whatever happens, girl, I'm gonna be there with, with you being shocked at the pictures because I don't know how they're gonna come out too. Basically, I told her I couldn't do it. I mean, I literally have no experience. I don't even know how to use a camera. I don't even have a camera. There's really not much to work with here other than my artistic background. So I thought it was over and done with. Little did I know, people are very persistent in this day and age, back in 2009 as well. She ended up asking me again and I think that time I just caved and I was like, okay, well, if you don't mind then I'm, you know, I might ruin your entire life, but it's fine. She kind of just convinced me. So I remember this conversation we had, I was sitting in her car, she had just dropped me home and I basically told her, look, you don't have to pay me for this wedding stuff, uh, consider it as a gift. So she basically said like, no, absolutely not. I, I'm going to pay you and I'm not gonna let you do this for free, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, like you don't have to do that. And of course we went into this like back and forth about the, the payment stuff, was, which was really uncomfortable for me. And she just said, okay, um, I'm gonna be tipping you. Like I'm, I'm gonna give you a tip and I, I wanna give you something, like I'll pay you, I'll, I'll you know. So she, she's the one who basically was like, no, I'm going to pay you 100% no matter what. That was it. That was really all that was left of that conversation. Again, it was really uncomfortable. So she is the one that insisted that I get a tip and she was gonna pay me for the work that I did. So I agreed. I was like, okay, that's fine. The wedding was coming up. I did her engagement pictures. So basically we went to a park and I literally, again, I'm not a photographer, okay? You guys, I literally had to rent a camera from my school. I did, it, I th it was like a Canon G7X or something. It was like a not, it was like a small point and shoot. Oh my god! I had to rent this camera. I had to pay to rent it. I think it had like an on-camera flash. <laughs> I know, right? It was super awkward for me. It was my first time being around a couple that was really affectionate and everything. And I was I'm 19 years old. I've been watching like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing, but I know that she loved the pictures. I mean, after I sent her them edited, she was posting them everywhere. She kept telling me that she liked them. And I know you guys are probably gonna be wondering why I'm not gonna be showing a lot of these pictures or any of these pictures. And then she asked me to do her invitations for her bridal shower. She knew I was a graphic designer. I mean, listen, I don't know more, I don't know how, what the, the whole deal was with the invitations, but I ended up doing them for her. I literally custom made them. So I created them from scratch. I designed them, I edited them, and then I printed them out at my school. I cut them out with an X-Acto knife by hand, each and every invitation. I don't even know why I did all this. Like, 
why was I so extra? Like, it's just a bridal shower. <laughs> and my sisters were invited to the bridal shower. I was invited to the bridal shower, which was kind of funny because guess what? Guess who took pictures of the bridal shower? This girl right here. Man, I got <laughs> I was bamboozled. I was like, she was, she, that's smart. Like, that was like free labor. I don't know why I did all that. Now I'm really just mad at my former self. I'm gonna have a, I'm just gonna have to talk to myself about this later after this. I'm gonna start writing all the stuff I did down because now I'm, this is just becoming a list. So let's recap, shall we? The engagement pictures, the invitations, the bridal shower. So now at this point, I'm dumb as hell. I didn't even realize what was happening. I'm like, yeah, I get to take pictures. This is fun. So after all of that, I sent her all the pictures, gave her everything on CDs. And that's how you know it was 2009. I was giving out CDs. <laughs> if I can go back in time and slap myself, <laughs> I would. Then there was the wedding. As you know, I am the designated wedding photographer. Last minute, they wanted me to do video. <laughs> Literally, I'm writing this down. That's it. So you guys know your girl doesn't do video too, but guess what? She did video on that day. She was a videographer. She was a photographer. She was um, a camp counselor. She was being taken advantage of. She was being used. It's a good one actually. We're at that on voice. This, this is not looking good for me right now. So then I was designated to be the wedding videographer. And this was something that was put upon me last minute because I don't know. Maybe they're like, you know what? We're taking advantage of Jessica anyway. Don't even, don't even worry about hiring a videographer. We got someone to do it for She just did everything for us. Like, she's dumb. Oh, don't pick up your dry cleaning. I got a girl who can come do that. She doesn't do videos. But she's doing it today for me. So the day of the wedding, I had to be at the groom's house. By the way, they lived an hour from me, so I drove all the way up there, take pictures of this family, who by the way were not very polite. They were like yelling at me to do stuff. Oh, do this, or, did you get this, and did you do this? Everything's all over the place. I don't even know, was I shooting a JPEG? Probably. Who is even to know? Not me. It's as if I was Metal Mario and I had just jumped into an ocean and I'm just trying to survive. Then I went to the bride's house, which again was my close family friend and my mom's friend. And just It was such an awkward thing to do. I don't know, someone walking down the street probably could have came in and assisted me because they would have had as much knowledge as I did. Zero. So after I took pictures of the groom's family, the bride's family, I took the bride and the groom to another location and we took pictures outside. Then I went to the hall and I started setting up and I don't even know what that means because I, <laughs> I literally did not know what I was doing. I had this video camera that I borrowed again from my college. I had no idea how to work it, but I knew that I pressed the record button and it, it, it does its thing, it records. I had to take pictures and then I had this like rolling tripod in which I just rolled it and took video. So I was doing both of those things at once. It was a hot mess. I mean, I don't even know how I did any of that. And keep in mind, it was just, you know those rectangular type video cameras with like the little flip screen that comes out? That was what I was using. <laughs> I don't know. I tried. I really did try my best. I didn't know what I was doing most of the time, but I, she was really happy with what I did so far, so I figured, you know, if I just keep doing the same thing, I should be okay. So towards the end, I ended up dancing a little bit, and then I went home, and I worked on the pictures for her. I edited a bunch of them, and then I just sent them to her right away. Just like I had done with the engagement pictures, just like I had done with the bridal shower, I gave them to her on a CD. So her wedding was end of November. From November to February, I was sending her pictures through email. And you can see in these emails, like I sent her quite a few. <laughs> Look at me, I was like sending one or two pictures in each email because there was no space. So that's kind of just how I was doing things to begin with. I was sending her previews and showing her some of the photos through email. And then um, I believe it was mid-February. She called me and we were, t I don't know how payment came up, but she told me, email me an estimate of, you know, everything. Just like send me like an invoice or something. And so I was like, okay, like I'll send you an estimate. So that is when I sent her an estimate email. Basically trying to like justify the hours and the everything and the, 
the rate per hour, all that stuff. I had no idea what I was doing again, by the way. But I sent her an email. The amount that I charged her, which I thought was pretty fair for all the work that I've done, was $300. And I don't even know how I came up with an amount so low. That's practically, I mean, that would probably cover all the gas and all the paper and all the printing that I did. Basically, I w was breaking even with that number. So I was trying to be reasonable. So when I sent her that email, I didn't think much of it until I got an email back from her, which shocked me. And I'm gonna read this verbatim because I'm not trying to summarize this. It's, it is what it is, so let's just read it. So I emailed her the estimates on February 20. She responded February 22nd, and this is what she said. Jessica, I don't care for how the situation has gotten out of control and I want to put an end to it because it's a waste of your time and mine. While I appreciate you offering to take pictures from my engagement and wedding, I am not very happy with many of the results. First of all, I didn't offer to take pictures. You asked me to take pictures, but okay. I want to remind you that in the beginning we agreed as friends to have you take my pictures for practice and for free. Oh my god, I'm shocked. Where's Pinocchio? He would be very upset. I love how she says, I want to remind you. Many of the wedding pictures turned out blurry or had someone not completely in the picture. If this came from a professional service, I would not purchase them. However, it was from my wedding and I really wanted to keep whatever memories I could from it in pictures and video, which also was not very good. I understand that you are asking for payment for your work now, but I've spoken to my father-in-law and husband and after they reviewed the pictures and video, they are not agreeing to pay. So at this time, I do not need any more of your services or any of the pictures from you anymore. And this is kind of funny because I had already sent her everything, keep in mind. I plan to have my pictures retaken later this year, which is going to cost me more than if I would have hired a professional service in the first place because I have to get my hair and makeup done all over again. I'm sorry that it has come to this, but I would prefer to salvage whatever is left of a friendship because I have known you and your family for a long time now and that is more important than money and things to me. Also, I'm asking you to not use any of my pictures for public use. I understand that you feel these pictures are your property. However, you do not legally own a business, nor did we sign any type of contract stating that I agree to allow you to use my pictures. I don't care about the pictures of the flowers or the rings, but pictures of me, my husband, family, and friends are not something that I agreed to have you post online or use in public. That's the email that she sent to me. And mm, <sighs> this just makes me kind of angry to look back on and I was angry at the time because I actually wrote her an email but I didn't send her it so it was just a draft and I'll read you a little bit of that so this is what I wrote but never sent to her I said I'm going to try to make this short you agreed to pay me from the beginning as stated in our phone conversation and you then agreed to give me payment a few days ago for my work you told me to send you an estimate and I did. You saw all the pictures beforehand and not once did you mention you did not like them. In fact, you told me that you liked them very much. Professional or not, you chose to work with me knowing very well it was my first time doing wedding pictures. What did you expect from me? You were well aware of this. Don't try to act like you were in the dark about anything. Don't try to act like this is the first time you've seen the pictures. And if you did not like them then, why carry this work on for four months? Whether you approve of them or not does not make it justified for you to weasel out of paying me for my hard work. In a court of law, I would surely get my money. Which is kind of funny, you know, considering what's about to happen next. You can pay me respectfully for all the hard work you know I put into this, or you can make me go out there and get it the hard way. I can't believe you would do this after everything that I've done for you. This is the very least you could do. So I contacted a family member who is an attorney and I asked for their help in taking this person to court. You know, now it just became the, you know, the principle of it. You know, you're gonna treat me like this, I'm gonna do all this stuff for you and then you're just gonna treat me like garbage and you're gonna send me a very evil email basically saying like, we don't like what you did. Even though you took everything and you kept telling me you liked the pictures and also keep in mind, she is the one who told me to email her an estimate. I did not even bring up the estimate. I didn't bring up the pay or anything. She's the one who's like, oh, send me an estimate for how much all of this, for however much you want for doing all of this. 
And that is when I sent her that email. And so when she responded back to me saying, oh, we don't like the pictures and we're not gonna pay you, then why ask me for to send you an estimate then? Why play this game? She was basically play, playing games. I, you're not freaking Backstreet Boys. I'm like, girl, I know you don't play video games. I, this, I'm the player in this game, okay? So it's not a two player game. So that's, I think it just became the principle of it all. So that is why I proceeded to go ahead and you know, file a claim in court and I basically took her to court. This family member told me to sue her for, for $1,500 even though the original amount was $300 and um, I think the whole purpose behind that was, you know, if you're not gonna pay me $300 then you're gonna have to pay me what the full amount would be which is $1,500. So, and, and this was not my idea, it was my family member's idea, and I trusted this person because, you know, they're, they're an attorney. So I basically sent her a certified mail, just demanding, you know, to be paid and all of that. I'm gonna have it right here somewhere for you guys to look at. I'm not gonna read it out loud, you guys can pause to read. So again, um, my family member helped type this up, and after that we did not hear anything back so i decided to go ahead and file my claim and i had to file again in her city she lived an hour from me so i went there i paid to file this case um i had no contract and i even told my relative i'm like is this going to be a problem because i don't have a written contract my relative basically told me a verbal contract is still just as good as a written contract so i was pretty confident that I would be okay and that I would win this court case. That's like, that's it. The court is fair, so we should have no problem. So the day of the court case, I wasn't exactly sure if she was even going to show up. I was sitting there watching everybody else's cases and this judge seemed really mean. So I was kind of nervous. I'm like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? A couple minutes before my case, I'm like, oh my God, like she's not gonna, she didn't come. And then who walks in? It's her. And I believe it was her husband, and then it was some other guy. I, did, I had no idea who he was. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's on now. Like, this is getting real. The judge is like talking to us both, and I'm trying to just speak my case and everything. I had all the pictures, I had all the proofs of everything. So we're going back and forth, and she basically said in a court of law that she never said that she would pay me. Then that guy that she brought, that random guy, ended up being another photographer from my city. And she basically brought him and she's like, you know, we had to hire this guy instead and he charges only $400. So why is she charging $1,500? Basically to be like, she's she's overcharging us right now by trying to sue us for, for $1,500. So I hand the judge all the pictures that I took. This is like a stack of photos, proofs and proofs of photos. I, I give him all the emails, like everything, everything, everything. And then he's just like, okay, well, you're gonna hear your your resolution in, in a letter in the mail. And so I'm like, okay. Fast forward, I think about a month later, I got a letter in the mail. And I was so nervous to open it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, hopefully this is something good. I open it and the judge rules against me without prejudice. So basically I can file again and you know, try to retry the case, but that's it, I lost. With this, with this time, I lost. And I would have to pay and do all that stuff all over again if I wanted to refile. I was livid, I was fuming, I was in shock. How could I lose? I don't understand. Maybe, and then I started thinking, did I, did I put too much, like $1,500? Because that's what my relative, that's like what my relative told me to put. I felt really stupid. I just, I was like, she won basically. She literally won. She got all of that. She she knew what she was doing. She did all of that to take advantage of me and use me because she wanted free photography and videography and free everything. And she, and she won in the end. And I was so pissed off that I lost. By the way, when I was in court, the judge asked if I had a contract and that was so important to him and I didn't have one. I, I had a verbal contract but sometimes, I mean, it's all about something on paper, something written. So I'm pleading with you guys, please, please, please learn from my mistake. But I'll tell you something, after that, I did start doing professional photography and guess who had a contract every single time they booked a client and never had one issue? Alhamdulillah, this girl right here. So. I definitely learned from my mistake. I hope that this story kind of 
inspires you to start right, drafting up that contract, take it to a lawyer, have them look at it, and start getting all your clients to sign it when you book them because there's no other way to do business. I would not recommend doing business without a contract. So I hope that you guys took away something from my video. Have you guys ever had an experience like this? Did you ever try to take somebody to court? Let me know all your experiences down below in the comments. And I wanna thank you guys so much for watching.